Hello Freaky Family and welcome back. We will be discussing Trevor in India, Gabby and Catherine, and then we'll chase it down with a quick shot of Gene Simmons. If you're new here or not new here, I am offensive. But you're gonna be offended at some point, okay? Can we all just put on our big girl panties and get over it? I'm talking about reality TV, for goodness sake. Also, if you are a cast member and you are watching this show, hi! If there's ever anything that you would like known, I will always keep everything that you tell me anonymous. Let me see your teeth so I can see what beautiful smile I'm about to get right now. Oh! We must get started with Trevor and India. The two of them are in the bathroom together again. This time though, they are taking molds of Trevor's teeth because India thinks she's going to somehow stick her giant chompers into the mold of his teeth. Then we make a mold of Trevor's teeth. Move it around, move it around, move it around. Stop it, stop it. Everyone wants to know how this happened, Elisa. This relationship goes beyond the norm. Can't you see that? I don't know if my mom looks at Trevor as her son or her husband. Like, I don't really. Dad. Why is he smelling the mold that was just in her mouth? <gasps> Delisa tells us that with this baby about to pop out, she's at the peak of what she can handle and will be telling Trevor that her mother needs to go. And if he doesn't comply, then he has to go too. I need my mom out by the time this baby comes. Trevor's like, okay, yeah, you're right, but I don't think two months is fair. And Delisa's like, no, Trevor, I'm serious this time. And then Trevor tells us that he's trying to stall because he doesn't want to kick the mother out. So then Delisa says, if you can't tell her to go, then you're both going. But I also can't, in my right mind, just be like, all right, Ma, look, it's time for you to go. Either she goes, Oh, y'all both can go. Then Trevor starts getting a little more fired up, but he holds the line. Two months is not enough time for India to find a place. I'm not disputing her having to go. For you us to get some peace, I'm not. I'm just disputing the time frame. That's it. Okay, here's the thing. He's sort of right. Two months isn't very much time, but he never gives Delisa any other time frame which means he wants to just leave it open-ended. And Delisa knows that means her mom isn't going anywhere. You don't understand how stressed I am about this situation. Like, Listen, man, I don't, I'm- And then he says, you should be happy that I'm even agreeing she needs to go. Wow. Thank you, my Lord, for bestowing this beautiful blessing upon me. You want her to go in two months. I, I think that doesn't work. So, you need to lower your voice. How about no, that? No, 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 no. I'm not going to because you're not listening now. Delisa does what any sane woman would do. She waddles over to his dresser and starts throwing his clothes on the floor to prove her point. You really about to do that? Yep. This is the most childish thing I've ever seen you do. Just look at this scene. This woman is ready to burst with your third child and she's so fed up, she is still willing to lose you. If that is not a desperate woman, I don't know. Oh, Chantal just came to mind. Never mind. She starts telling him to get out, and he just lays there, smiling back at her, and then she starts yelling at him, go, go! Get, go sleep with your best friend. I, you know what, as a matter of fact, if you're gonna talk to me like that, then I'm, I'm Leaving. Like, you know oh better than God. to talk to me like that. No, I'm not going to stand better. here and listen you know to that. Better. So then guess what he does? He goes to sleep with his mother. In the same bed, under the same covers. You're telling me you don't have a couch? You'd rather sleep with your mother-in-law? Also, her little avocado pajamas are so cute. I wanted to buy them, but I couldn't find them. Sorry. Ooh. Look like I'm sleeping with you tonight, though. What now? Did anyone else notice that when Trevor climbed into the bed, she didn't have a sheet on her mattress? It's just a mattress pad. Ugh. You know what? Like, I ain't come down here to get all into it. Like, I came down here because I need a break from it. Fine with me. 
Here we go. The producers ask them if they have been intimate. The pause that they take is more pregnant than his wife. Have you two ever had an intimate relationship? No. No. What do you think? I mean, that pause and that face was kind of everything I needed to see. After they tell us they aren't intimate, he gives her a totally non-intimate kiss goodnight. Get some sleep, sleep ahead. Mm -hmm. All right, I love, I love you. I love you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yep. The next day, this issue does not get resolved. You know why? Delisa goes into labor. <gasps> I know, but you, you're a champ, baby. I honestly, I can't imagine giving birth to your third baby. Y your other two are toddlers, and you're gonna come home to this? I've done this two times over. Nobody's better than you. Okay, they're in the delivery room. Delisa has told Trevor she only wants it to be the two of them. And Trevor is really sad that his lover couldn't be there to share this beautiful moment. Sorry, Mom. That's okay, no problem. And then when the baby comes out, he says it's a spitting image of India. When Tessa came out, the minute I saw her, I was like, wow, like, there's my mother-in-law right there. I'm sure Delisa loved hearing that. I'm excited that the baby looks like me because it makes me more connected to Trevor. These two will probably raise that baby like it's their own child. And isn't Delisa beautiful? So they get back home and Trevor's like, see, if mom wasn't here, who would have been able to watch the kid? Then we see Delisa sit down and the next thing we know, she's getting rushed back to the hospital. She has postpartum preeclampsia and it can have super serious risks. Complaining of like, like chest pain, you know, high blood pressure, headache trevor appears to be upset i don't know if this is just acting because who records themselves sobbing like this i was looking for tears but i don't see any apparently the doctor said that delisa's stress levels are way too high and the stress needs to be managed at home i have to have a conversation with her and say unfortunately she's gonna have to go Oh, that's probably why he's crying, because he knows that the mom has to leave. <laughs> Moving on, we left Gabriella at the pageant, waiting to find out if she can answer a question. Growing up, I've always struggled with reading comprehension, yes. and I actually learned that I was just more of a creative person, and now I am a stylist. I love the beauty industry. Sweet Gabriella nails the question. Her mother must be so proud that she's come so far and worked so hard. But will I cry if she loses? In private? Probably. I guess mom's gonna be crying because Gabriella placed fourth. I don't know anything about pageants, but seriously, she looked incredible. We worked so hard for years to win this pageant. We really thought it was our year. Her mother is devastated and wastes no time telling Gabriella that they will immediately begin preparing for the next pageant. I literally said that I didn't seem mature and that I need more life experiences to win the crown. Who it's said that? The judges, what are you talking about? Your boobs are out. Lady, your clothes don't have anything to do with life experience. You spent a whole year correcting that. Thanks for watching my To get the same placement? What is that? Honey. Gabby is extremely frustrated and getting irritated with her mom. She's like, Mom, last year I placed fourth because I screwed up and I was okay with that. But this year, I did everything to the absolute best of my ability and I still placed fourth. It's natural for you to be upset, but we'll just start training for the next pageant. And Gabby's like, how about a different pageant or something else completely? We don't, we don't, we actually don't want this crown. I don't Let's know, Gabrielle. I'll go for a different one. What about our legacy? And Your legacy? First of all, the only legacy the two of you have is this trash heap of a show you're on. Second, the mother's legacy was winning once, like 50 years ago. Get over it. Move on with your life. 
Gabriella goes to talk to the judges to try and get some clarity on what happened with her and how she can improve. And the judges tell her she doesn't have enough life experience. And the mom goes, what are you talking about? Your boobs were out. You had to slit up your dress. What do they want? So poor little loser Gabriella wakes up the next morning and has to go to work. I was amazed to see that this girl actually does hair. Well, like we never actually saw her do anything. She just kind of stood there and held the same piece for a long time, but still. So her friend's like, Gabby, what happened? And she tells her she didn't win and she doesn't know if she wants to keep doing pageants because it feels like her whole life is on hold. Are we still doing ladies night? Kayla, you're coming, right? Ladies night. Gabby, you're coming, right? Oh. Um, and Gabby's like, oh, I don't know if I can. My mom might not let me. I don't know if my mom will let me. Gabby, are you kidding me? Oh, there you go. <laughs> She'd be pissed because she already made plans for us tonight. And then Gabby tells us she wants to be more than a pageant winner from Connecticut. She is dreaming big. So I guess we'll get to see her shatter her mother's heart in the next episode. I want to walk in New York Fashion Week. But what about the pageants? Last but not least, we have Kathy and Christina. Kathy is working on her funeral birthday party, which means she has to cast her legs so that her fake casket will have her fake legs hanging out of it. But people are always commenting on my legs. So it's very important to me that I want it to look like my legs. Later that day, Christina comes up to her and she's like, mom, I am so sorry that I flipped out on you but it was your fault. Of course it was. Why was it my fault? Because you did not tell me what was going on. And the mom's like, okay, look, I just don't want you to worry about me. I was always so scared about my mom's health and I don't want you to have that same fear. I don't want you to worry about me the way I worried about her when, you know, at that point when she wasn't, you know, feeling good and stuff. And Christina says, honestly, mom, I feel better knowing it's only diabetes. It could have been way worse. And I, I mean, mom, you can never stop me from worrying about you. I know, but. Wow, she has come a long way since the last time we saw her screaming at her mom that she might die. In the next episode, we're gonna see India yelling at Trevor after he tells her it's time for her to go. And that is it for this recap. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a thumbs up, leave some comments below, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.